Hey friends, welcome to another 5 Minute Rounds. I've got a good case for you today. It's actually a veterinarian's dog. So when I get cases where I know it's a veterinarian's dog, I always get a little bit nervous because I just hate delivering bad news to anybody really, but especially when it's to the veterinarian. So I always am just extra hopeful that it's not something bad in those cases. Um, but this is the vet's dog. It's an 8 year old mixed breed dog. and the pup has a large mass that was aspirated that was at the base of its ear on the right side of its face. So this is the aspirate and we can see already at 10x that it's a very cellular sample. We've got these huge groups of cells that you can see down there. So really gigantic groups of cells that we're already getting an epithelial vibe from even at this 10x objective because these cells look like they're present in these big uh, cohesive sheets where they actually want to hang on to each other. So looking at these closer up, now we're on 20x, we can see that pattern even better here. So yeah, these guys really want to hang on to each other. They want to be friends. They have these little microscopic cellular hooks between the cells where they are intentionally hooking together. So they're not mesenchymal cells, they're not round cells, they're epithelial. And then anytime, um, I'm getting too excited, <laughs> going too fast. So Epithelial cells, we have a ton of these. That's consistent with an epithelial neoplasm, right? So then the next thing you want to ask yourself is, do I see criteria of malignancy to suggest that this is a carcinoma, which is the malignant form of a epithelial neoplasm, or is this a benign population? So looking at these even closer up, we're going to look for criteria of malignancy, and I do not see really any, um, which is great. So the cells are all about the same size, so really no anisocytosis. The nuclei, nuclei are all about the same size, so no real anisocyto, um, sorry, anisokaryosis. No prominent nucleoli. These cells do have high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratios, meaning there's not a lot of cytoplasm compared to the amount of nucleus they have. That can be a criteria of malignancy in some cases, but actually, in this case, it's characteristic to the type of cell we're looking at. So what type of cell in the skin might have a high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio? Well, basal epithelial cells. So basal epithelial cells naturally have that high nuclear to cytoplasmic ratio where they just have a little bit of cytoplasm and lots of nuclei, uh, lots of nuclear volume, I should say. And sometimes you'll even see this kind of stacking look where the nuclei are all stacked up together in their big dense clusters and even these big kind of I'm going to back up just a little bit, these almost grape-like clusters of cells. Ah, there's a big shadow <laughs> going across. Sorry, add a little bit of oil. Ah, much better. So it's almost like grape-like cluster of cells, and that's something else you'll see with basal epithelial cells. One thing you also might have noticed already as we're going around are these individualized spindeloid cells here scattered about where we see their little wispy borders. Um, those are not concerning in this case because you can sometimes see spindle cells in association with this particular type of uh, these particular types of tumors. So we have all these basal epithelial cells. This would be consistent with a trichoblastoma, um, also called a basal cell tumor in cats. Mostly is what we still we call it a basal cell tumor in cats, but in dogs we're classifying them now as trichoblastomas. And there are other types of follicular tumors that can have basal epithelial cells in them. So I don't always just straight up call it a trichoblastoma. I just suggest, you know, it's a follicular tumor. It's uh, very likely benign. There are some, um, there are some scenarios where you can have what we call well differentiated malignant tumors where on cytology they look perfectly benign, but when you do histopath they're actually malignant. That's an uncommon scenario in these cases with these follicular tumors, but it does happen. So even though um, I do believe this is most likely a benign tumor like a trichoblastoma, I would re recommend removal in these cases just to get uh, histopathologic confirmation so that you can be sure. But um, yeah, this is very, very likely good news for this veterinarian, which is wonderful. It makes me happy. I don't have to send them something terrible um, about their own pet. But I love these tumors. They're, they're so beautiful and typically good news. So all, all around a good situation. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, five minute rounds. If you guys have seen these cases before, if you've seen basal epithelial cells, let us know in the comments. If you've got any questions, let us know in the comments. Otherwise, see you next time.